The Lifestylist, episode 181, featuring Lily Kunin. I'm Luke Story, a former celebrity fashion stylist and founder of School of Style. For the past 20 years, I've been relentlessly dedicated to my deepest passion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of health and spirituality. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. Yo, what's up? You're listening to a guy who is borderline obsessed, if not even addicted to uh, improving my health through supplementation, biohacking, all these types of things. If you've heard the show before, you probably have a sense for that. Uh, It's kind of what I do. It's what I'm into. I like to feel really good and I like to have my body in shape, feeling healthy, have energy. I can't stand the feeling of being inflamed. I don't like oxidative stress. I like to be in homeostasis and I hope to live my life for the rest of my days, free of disease with the absolute highest level of cognitive function and cellular health and energy that I can. One of the things that I use literally on a daily basis to help me maintain that is something called molecular hydrogen. And there are a few companies out there making hydrogen products. The one that I've settled on that is my all-time favorite is called Vital Reaction. Their website is vital-reaction.com. By the way, if you get over there to check out this hydrogen, you can use the code LUKEH2 and save 10%. They've got two products over there that I use every single day. One of them is a medical grade hydrogen gas inhaler. That's pretty intense. That's not going to be accessible to everyone. But as I said, I'm pretty obsessed about this stuff. So I use that inhaler every damn day. What's more accessible, really easy to use and way more affordable are the easy to dissolve hydrogen tabs. You just drop one or two of those in a glass of water and bada bing, bada boom, they dissolve. You drink that within about 30 seconds or so and you've just ingested uh, tons of molecular hydrogen gas, which is going to give you tons of health benefits that are backed up by hundreds of scientific and clinical studies. So this is not placebo, this is not a theory. This is a scientific fact that this substance is really, really good for you. So to check it out, go over to vital-reaction.com. That's vital-reaction.com. And perhaps equally as important is the code LUKEH2 that's going to save you 10%. And if you invest in one of these inhalers, that 10% is going to be very meaningful. So get over to vital-reaction.com and use the code LUKEH2. Man, oh man, Organifi has done it again, you guys. They've come up with another delicious, super-powered, healthy drink mix. This is called Red Juice. It's packed with antioxidants and 11 superfoods, including reishi and cordyceps. So this is a really potent and easy to use and delicious red juice powder. So imagine you go to you know a place that sells like a pressed juice or something and you pay 10 bucks for a juice. Well, each one of these juices, which is much easier to deal with and much more portable, by the way, costs you only three bucks per juice. And it's, of course, totally organic. So this is Organifi Red Juice. My new favorite thing to do like midday, I'll usually do like a green juice in the morning to kind of get alkaline, then a red juice midday. And then I do their uh, Organifi Gold later on in the evening because it's super calming. So these guys are kind of coming out with products to cover the whole rainbow and they all uh, have different uses at different time in the day. So if you want to check out the Red Juice or any other fantastic Organifi product, here's what you do. Go to Organifi.com forward slash Luke. That's Organifi spelled with an I. Organifi.com forward slash Luke. Enter the code LIFESTYLIST at checkout and you will save yourself 20%. So it's a really keeping fat discount for you over at Organifi. Check them out. Their stuff is fantastic and I use it literally every day. My name is still Luke Story, and this is still the Lifestylist Podcast. And I have one word to summarize this year of 2018, and that is just wow, with extra O's and extra W's. I cannot believe that this year is coming to an end, nor can I believe the number of fantastic conversations that I've been able to participate in as a host of this show. So... 
Before I go any further, I just want to say thank you to every single guest I've had on this year. I want to say thank you more than anything to you. Yes, you. I'm speaking right into your ears, whoever you are. I wish I could see you. You know, that's the thing. You guys get to hear me, but I don't get to see or hear you uh, unless I go to an event and and you come along. And that happens a lot, exceedingly uh, more and more all the time. But man, seriously, what a year. And um, this is another episode I recorded on my recent New York tour. Our guest is Lily Coonan. And I met her uh, because I wanted to check out this place called Clean Market, um, of which she is the founder or co-owner, whatever she is. We'll find out in the interview. I forget the exact title, but this place is dope. And let me tell you what, uh, you know, New York a few years ago left a lot to be desired for a healthy person like myself. I mean, I remember going to New York, man, I, I would think I was a vegetarian when I first started going there many years ago. And I mean, I couldn't even find organic food. I remember one time I was eating at the this restaurant called the Breslin. It was in the Ace Hotel. And I was like freaking out because they did it was like very meaty and it was like super porky too. It wasn't even just meat, it was like a pig restaurant. And it totally creeped me out. So uh I ordered something called uh sweetbreads. And um they bring it over and it looked like little tubes of white something. And I started digging into it. I said, man, this sure tastes meaty. And the waitress comes back and I said, you know, is this, is it just me or does this have some meat sauce? And she said, sir, you're eating intestines of a lamb or something like that. That was New York City back in the day. Fast forward to now, we've got the clean market. And this place is where you can go do cryo infrared saunas. And by the way, they have clear light saunas, the best saunas. Uh, You can do an IV drip and get the most amazing elixirs and smoothies and skincare products. So I'm just like stoked when I find something like that. And I was so stoked with finding Clean Market that I just decided to go ahead and interview their founder, Lily. And uh, it's funny because while I did this interview, uh, I was getting an IV. So it's it's I think it's the first one in a long time I haven't put on video just because I couldn't fit my video equipment in the little IV room. It was kind of funny having the the very knowledgeable and friendly. And I must say a very gentle nurse who was poking me in the arm. Uh, he came walking through and he's like, uh, what, <laughs> what is all this stuff? I'm like, dude, you, you, we, when we got to go, we got to go. I need my IV. I went in and I did a cryo. I did a sauna and um, got a needle in my arm, did the IV and uh, recorded the interview on a drip. So just when you think you've done it all, you outdo yourself. That's what it's up with having a uh, a podcast all about health and wellness. But before we get into this really fun interview about how to uh, thrive in a city like New York, I want to invite you to a very special Christmas episode that I'll be dropping next Tuesday. That's number 182. And this is a talk that I did at Rama as part of my High Love Experience workshop on a recent trip there. So this is recorded live the lecture portion of that event at Rama Institute in New York City. And it was one of the most special evenings of my life. The audience was comprised of about 95% Lifestylist podcast listeners. So it was one of those situations in which I actually got to hear your story, or at least the your that was at the event, and really meet people and find out you know, what were how the most impactful episodes and the most powerful things that people had learned or how they were inspired. And it was just so fun to be able to look in the eyes of a packed room full of people and know that, you know, the connection was no longer one way. They didn't just have a relationship with me or my guests, but I got to have a relationship with them. So it was a really special evening. And uh, I have to say, you know, not to toot my own horn, but in, in with all due uh, humility. I, I think it was one of the best talks I ever did. So I'm just praying that the audio came out okay. I haven't checked the file, but I know it's somewhere in Dropbox and that'll be out next Tuesday. So that's the High Love Experience with yours truly live at Rama, New York City. Please subscribe to the Lifestylist podcast. Very easy to do. Reach down, grab your device, your computer, the app that you're listening to my voice on right now and just click subscribe. It's that easy. Next step after you click subscribe is click on share and uh, share Lily's interview with someone that you know that likes to get down with a uh, a clean market kind of lifestyle. So who's our guest? Lily Coonan is on a mission to redefine what it means to feel well. And when you hear her story, you're going to understand why she is passionate about that particular topic. 
She's a wellness expert and creator of Clean Food Dirty City, a lifestyle website and digital channel with over 125,000 followers that follow the ethos that good food makes you feel good. Simple, but easy to miss. You know what I'm saying? Like when I almost ate that, well, no, I didn't almost, I did eat some of those sweet breads, that tripe or colon or whatever it was that I ate at Ace Hotel years ago. Learned my lesson. Also, she's got this fantastic spot, of course, as I said, Clean Market. And that's her first brick and mortar, which is combining her passion for food and her background in health coaching and functional medicine. So as I said, this was recorded with a vitamin mineral IV drip in my arm at the clinic, in the clinic department at Clean Market. And uh, very fun conversation. And before I get into that, I just want to give you a little a little perk here, a little holiday bonus, that if you're in New York City and you want to go check out Clean Market, uh, you can do this. Just tell them the code, I guess, when you... I don't know if you do it when you book or when you walk in there. Clean Lifestyle is 20 and get 20% off your first service. So this could be an IV drip, cryotherapy, clear light sauna. You can go in there and get the goods. Use the code clean lifestyle is 20 for 20% off. I thought that was very nice of her. You know, sometimes if someone has a brick and mortar, it's like, eh, what are they going to offer? But she wants to meet you. So if you're a listener of the show, definitely get to clean market. It's absolutely going to be on one of my first stops. I might even just fly into JFK, hop in an Uber, go there, get my IV, do all the things, and then go check in my hotel straight up. Very cool spot. All right, so here's what we talk about. How to stay healthy and sane in a big toxic city like New York City. Lily's college experience with celiac disease and vertigo. The cleanest alcohols for safe drinking binges. A really important one for the holidays for many of you, you little you little um, boozers out there. You can learn how to do it with minimal damage. The reality of gluten hangovers. Yes, that happens. I'm very familiar with those. It's called, was the pizza worth it? If you're in New York City, it just might be. What Lily learned from studying functional medicine under our former two-time guest, Dr. Robin Burzen from Parsley Health. Lily's food posts at the dawn of Instagram and how she grew her massive following. The seven pillars of functional medicine, energy, form, flow, brain, gut health, immunity, and detox. Why amazing skin requires cleaning up your gut. Approachable introductory items for customers who are new to contemporary wellness products. The power of Vedic meditation to make you kinder, more focused, and more present. Cryotherapy as a means to reduce anxiety, increase energy, and even cure ladies' monthly cramping. You're going to want to listen to that part, ladies, if that's something you're dealing with. I know uh, I use cryotherapy to deal with full body cramping. Lily's favorite supplement brands. And she is quite the connoisseur, I have to say. You know, I'm, I consider myself to be, um, well, I want to say expert might be a little strong, but I'm very discerning when it comes to what I put in my body, especially when it comes to supplements. And as, as I reviewed the suite of goodies over at Clean Market, I was damn impressed. And then finally, we talk about the secrets of the glutathione glow. And I got one while we were sitting there doing this dang interview. So there you go. Really excited to share. This is the second to the last show we're doing this year. And of course, uh, the Christmas special, Luke Live at Rama, New York City, the High Love Experience next Tuesday will be the very last show of the year, followed by, oh my God, the first of the year, uh, January 1st, 2019, we've got Paul Selig a channeled podcast. You don't want to miss that. Make sure you subscribe and share the show with a friend. And without further delay or ado, here is our guest, Lily Kunin. So ladies and gentlemen, listeners of the Lifestyle is Podcast, I'm here with my new friend, Lily. And uh, you can't see this, obviously, as you listen to this, but I've got a vitamin and a nutrient IV in my arm as we speak. I'm over here at Clean Market in New York City. Lily invited me over here today. And then I did a great infrared sauna, which was a clear light, thank God. And uh, and then I was going to do the IV and then we'd do an interview. And uh, she had the brilliant idea. Why don't we just kill two, two birds at one stone and do the interview while you're on the IV? So the first time I've ever been being flooded with nutrients as we speak and record. So I'm hoping that it has the net effect of making me an even better host and I might get suddenly <laughs> highly articulate or something fantastic like that. Or just get so relaxed that you just have to take over the whole conversation. <laughs> so you have a background in 
health food, functional medicine. You grew up with chefs in your family. Uh, you, like so many of us that have gotten into wellness, um, had some physical issues like migraines mm-hmm. and vertigo and things like that that you were working through. So give us yeah, just a short bit of your origin story because I really want to bring it up to speed quickly and get into where you are and like this fantastic space right. that we're in right now. Yeah. So I grew up with chefs in my family. My background's in food and functional medicine. Um, so I was always really comfortable around food and cooking. It was just something that was naturally a part of my life. And then, like you mentioned, I had migraines and vertigo. That was for about a four-year period um, through high school and college. And I was really sick to the point where I was like, you know, missing half my classes, kind of bedridden by noon every day, not re- not being able to figure out what wow, was going that bad, on. Wow, huh? Hardcore. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was doing everything conventional, seeing neurologists, getting scans, and then everything kind of alternative to acupuncture um, and craniosacral and all those things, which this was 12 years ago at this point. So it wasn't as in vogue. And um, so four years of experimentation just kind of kept getting worse. Um, And my grandfather had recently been diagnosed with celiac. So I looked that up on the internet. I was fascinated with anything medical. And I saw that one of the symptoms could, you know, on the long list could be migraines and vertigo. Gave up gluten the next day. And over the course of the next couple of weeks, felt so much better. Um, And so that was my connection between food and how it makes me feel and starting to get into the whole functional approach of things, which I didn't call it that at the time. I was in college. I was, you know, still doing what college kids do. Right. Um, What is that? Keggers and like... Listening yeah. to Limp Biscuit or some shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, it went. <laughs> I'm trying to picture your age, like when that would have been. You're relatively young. It went know, from, did I just say Limp Biscuit? I have no <laughs> idea where that came from. I'm picturing just like a douchey college scene somewhere, yeah. you know, um, but you don't strike me as that kind of girl. No, I went to a small liberal arts college in Connecticut. Uh, okay. So it okay. wasn't quite like that, but it went from keggers to more like, you know, I gave, had to give up beer, so it was more like vodka, tequila, which, you know, turns right. out to be the cleanest form of alcohol. Right. The perils days. of going gluten-free. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to back up and, and cover a, a couple of those things. I'm curious, subjectively, what you interpreted. I, I get migraines, kind of like super yeah. intense, like piercing your skull, headache. What <laughs> were the symptoms of vertigo and why do you call it that? My symptoms of vertigo were literally the room spinning. So I remember so clearly I'd be in my economics class and, you know, I'd be totally fine one second. And then all of a sudden, bam, like the room would just start spinning. And it's, if you've had that, it's the most uncomfortable, disorienting feeling. Um, Sometimes it'd go away in a couple of minutes. Sometimes it would last the entire class. And I would get so freaked out that it would happen in my next class that often I would just like, you know, go back to bed and try to let it pass. Um, And so it can, oftentimes you never know the cause of vertigo, Um, but it can be a type of migraine too. So when I did give up gluten, my vertigo subsided as well. Interesting. Yeah, because I experience this sometimes where I have this feeling... It's like being seasick or carsick, mm-hmm. but I've, I'm not in motion. Like I'm just chilling. <laughs> you know I mean? mm-hmm. And some days it just hits me. I mean, there are some times where like if I'm on the road and I'm like somebody else is driving, I'm looking at my phone. I mean, I'll get it, but it's the same exact feeling as that. And I've reported it to some healthcare professionals and they're like, oh, it sounds like vertigo. And I'm always thinking... I don't think it's that. I don't, it's Mm -hmm. not like the room spins like when you're drunk and then you smoke weed accidentally or whatever and you're like, everything's that disoriented. It's not like that. It's more of a subtle kind of Mm -hmm. nausea slash little dizzy feeling. So it's almost, I, I unfortunately I'm familiar with too many types of vertigo. Right, right. So it's but almost like the out of is, body experience where you're floating a little bit and it's but it's an uncomfortable floating, right. not like a meditative floating. Right. Yeah, because yeah. what you're describing sounds horrendous. Mm-hmm. Would you explain for people that are unaware? I recently did an episode on all grains and gluten with mm-hmm. Dr. William Davis and 
that one got a lot of positive response and a lot of downloads, uh, I think because it clarified so much of the gluten issue and then went on into all grains, really, which is that particular doctor's perspective is that humans aren't meant to eat any grains. But um, A, how did you know you have celiac? What is it? Um, Was it hard for you to quit gluten? It's like a five-part question. I just want the whole gluten celiac journey, basically. And then Mm -hmm. now can you eat other grains and gluten-free kind of stuff safely? I find, again, myself... um, Even if I have something gluten-free, it usually hurts my stomach because it's like some other whack, you know, industrial grains that are kept in a silo somewhere or something, you know? So what's your celiac gluten grains whole journey like? Yeah, so I had actually gotten the blood test done for celiac somewhere in that journey, probably the four-year journey where I was sick and towards the end and it had come back negative for the antibody originally. Um, And so... I just decided to give it up. Um, And I felt so dramatically different that after that, I went back for genetic testing. And that's kind of how I figured it out. Um, And so that's one thing to be aware of with intolerances and allergies and testing is that you can have false negatives, false positives. So for me, it's always about how it really makes you feel. So for me, it was such a night and day difference. I couldn't imagine putting gluten, you know, bringing it back into my life. At the time, it was obviously difficult because this was 12 years ago. There were no good gluten-free alternatives. So my grandfather, who is celiac, would mail me uh, to college like these frozen bricks that were bread. (laughs) Right, right, right. That we actually at my college, it was small, but we had a little dedicated area to gluten-free people. There was probably about five of us. And I would just like toast the shit out of the piece of toast. You know, it's like a hockey puck. Yeah, I remember those loaves. Yeah. Yeah. My dad is officially celiac, as is my brother Andy. And yeah, he was like an early pioneer of you know, having an understanding of gluten. And he used to get those breads. I think he bought them like frozen. Yes. And they're literally like a brick. They're so hard. You know, we've come a long way in the gluten-free. But like I said, whatever, like a couple nights ago at my hotel, I was like, oh, avoc-. they had this amazing sounding avocado toast, which is one of my favorite mm-hmm. things, which I used to get here in New York City at Cafe Giton, like with the gluten. It's so freaking delicious that I would just take the hit. Now, less so. And I was like, oh God, do you guys have that gluten-free? And they said, oh yeah, actually we do. And so I had that. And literally within 20 minutes, by the time I got up to my room, my stomach was like cramping. Mm -hmm. I I literally would have been better off having the gluten. Having the gluten. At least in the immediate. I probably would have had loose stool as a result uh, the following day. But that night I probably would have felt okay. Gluten for me, I get like a hangover from it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bother me in the moment. It's two or three days later, I'll start getting heartburn after I eat anything. It's weird. That's what happens to me when I have gluten too. It's It's, a delay kind of thing? It's usually a few hours later, the next day, like the worst hangover ever. That's the best way to describe the feeling. And then the vertigo can happen for like the next two weeks. Type right. of thing. Wow. God damn. So based on your trackable and quantifiable symptoms, it must have been relatively easy for you to then stop eating that. Exactly. It it was to a certain extent. Um, and now the point we're at where you can get gluten free everywhere and it actually tastes really good. Yeah. You know, it just I'm not tempted. So what's the rest of the journey as you got into functional medicine? I understand you worked at Parsley and uh, Robin, uh, the CEO, founder, I guess she has been on Mm -hmm. the show a couple of times. What was your involvement there? And what did you learn um, in functional medicine that you think has really paved the way for this next phase of your career and your own health? Yeah. So I went back to health coaching school when I was still working full-time in education Um, And then I simultaneously, you know, I I had my blog um, and my Instagram, Clean Food Dirty City, and that was growing. I was starting to work on my cookbook, um, left my job in education and started working at Parsley right as they were launching. And so that really was like, I kind of call it my fellowship after my health coaching certificate. You know, that was my... At being at Parsley was really my crash course in functional medicine and getting to know what functional medicine is, um, how you treat disease and prevent disease through 
food, diet, exercise, stress, and lifestyle management. Um, you know, shadowing their coaches, shadowing their doctors was such a great experience. And also just being in that whole startup space as a year later, I didn't know I was preparing for this, but, you know, starting or two years later, starting my own business clean market. So you had um, quite a large following and some notoriety from your blog and your Instagram. Like I was looking Mm -hmm. at your Instagram, you have, I think it was like over a hundred thousand followers and (laughs) really great photography, very well curated. So you were uh, sort of an earlier pioneer of the health and wellness, kind Mm -hmm. of pretty functional food photos and all that kind of stuff then. Yeah, I started my Instagram before most people even had a personal Instagram. And I just, you know, it was more of a food diary of what I was cooking at home. So I'd make overnight oats and just like snap a picture. If you scroll down to it, it's, you know, very poorly lit and just a reminder of what I made. So the next week I could go back and be like, oh, I did it with raspberries and chia. And, you know, it was just like a little trigger of that was delicious. I should make that again. And I didn't expect people to actually start following it. And when they did, um, you know, it was a true testament to the power of social media um, and really what you can share on it. Did you start to monetize your social media or your blog or anything, working with brands and getting affiliate accounts and any of that stuff? Or was it just really for fun? It was really just for fun. And I was in a fortunate position that I had a core income. So I was still working a full-time job so I could really make that decision. And I kind of made the commitment to myself that it was always going to be for fun. I never wanted to put the pressure on myself to be putting things out there um, just to put content out there. So if I take, if I take two weeks off, I can have, you know, less stress about it. Um, Right. And then, you know, as, as it started to grow, I started to get approached more for sponsorships and partnerships and opportunities. And I have definitely worked with brands that I really believe in and having that other income has, you know, allowed me to do so. And so at what point in the journey did you have the vision for clean market where we are today, which I kind of came in in a whirlwind and just jumped in a sauna and now I'm in here, but from what I've seen of it in just the short time today, like all of the branding is on point. Every recipe is dope. Like you guys are doing everything exactly right, according at least to what I think is right. Thank you. <laughs> um, how did that sort of evolve as an idea? Because it's something also that cities mm-hmm. like New York are in dire need of because... Right. Which you wouldn't necessarily think. You would think this kind of already exists in New York. But it was born or, you know, the idea started to come to my mind when I, you know, I'm a New Yorker. I, the city is, can be crazy and overwhelming and you want to do all of these things that are great for you and make you feel great. Um, So I would kind of be running around to go do a sauna and running to pick up my functional medicine supplements uh, and then getting my B12 shot and getting a healthy smoothie. And those were five different places in the city. Um, And so sometimes it just wasn't, you know, that in itself was a little bit stressful. So I really, I was starting to imagine this place where everything was under one roof. So I really wanted to create this one-stop shop that had everything. It has the cafe with healthy food. It has the apothecary market with functional medicine supplements, also herbs and pantry items and non-toxic home and beauty. And then it has all of the services. So you can come for infrared sauna, cryotherapy, cryofacials, localized cryo and IV drips. And everything's really designed to work synergistically so that you really only have to come to one place to kind of, you know, fuel up, you know, whether you're looking to boost your energy or prepare for travel like you are. When I first started coming here uh, 10 years ago or so on a regular basis, I was a vegetarian and was eating organically, you know, Mm -hmm. ideally. And I would go on Yelp or whatever it was, just Google, and I could not 
I mean, I couldn't find vegetarian food except Indian food. And there was like mm-hmm. two sort of, I think like Candle 79, I think it's called, yes. like up on the Upper East Side. There was like a couple spots that were, you know, nice, legit, 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 uh, legit latrine food, legit clean food. <laughs> and um, Did you at, go to Lifetime? That's uh, like an yeah. OG spot. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Sue Ann. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Angelica's Suen, yeah. Kitchen, which yes. sadly is no longer so open. Those were the spots. And then other than that, I just had to eat meat. And then as I started coming back, there was one juice press opened up like on first and house. And I think that mm-hmm. was the first one. And I used to stay at a hotel right there. And I was like, oh my God, like a juice place. It's organic. There he has a Norman Walker press. It was legit stuff. And then every time I come, but still like IVs and things like that were hard. And every time Mm -hmm. I'd come back, the food would get a little bit more accessible. And then I became a non-vegetarian and started finding grass-fed meat, et cetera. But when I started exploring getting IVs, I found a place like in Chinatown because they had a um, hyperbaric oxygen chamber. And it's a medical clinic, but like super kind of dingy and old. And uh, I had to pay like a medical fee to get like Mm -hmm. a medical exam. And they they were like, sorry, that's the law. If you want to get a vitamin IV in New York City, you have to get this whole thing. And I'm like, dude, I just want the IV. I get these all the time in LA. He's like, well, you got to pay the 150 for the exam. Then we approve you for the IV. And then that's another couple hundred dollars. I'm like, "Hmm, I think I'll take the jet lag. (laughs) Um, I think I found a way around it somehow. But it was it was difficult to to navigate that. And I didn't know of any place where I could get a sauna or do a float tank or any of that kind of stuff. So it's it's been really cool to to come here and and be able to find things and then also share it with other people that either live here or travel. It's one of the most common questions I get is like, well, you know, I'm coming to LA, like what are the best spots? Or I'm going to New York, what are the best spots? So uh, kudos to you for keeping it real. We're trying to catch up to LA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, you know, uh, I, I would say you guys are doing a pretty good job. So um, explain how you integrate these seven pillars of functional medicine yeah, so into your model here. We are driven by the seven pillars of functional medicine, and we've translated those to the store. Um, and so that every single product and service that we bring in maps back to one of those pillars. And the idea is when those pillars are in balance in your body, you've reached optimal functioning. So the pillars are energy. This, this is a pop quiz. So yeah, <laughs> ener- yeah. Don't energy, worry. I have them written down. If you stumble, <laughs> I got you, girl. We're good. Energy form, which is beauty flow, which is your lymphatic system. Um, brain, gut health, immunity, and detox. Detox. <laughs> That's pretty Perfect. good, though. That's pretty good. Yeah. So, based on the different supplements and modalities, um, you're addressing all of those pillars, and so this is kind of like a self-guided functional medicine, in a sense. Exactly. Exactly. And then we have obviously have people in the store that are trained professionals that can help you navigate all of that. And what are some of the things that you serve here? You know, I was perusing the menu. What are, what are some of your favorite things and things that you find people are gravitating toward and that you've been stoked to turn people on to in terms of elixirs and different herbs Mm -hmm. and things like that? Yeah. So at our cafe, we have a functional latte bar in partnership with Moon Juice, which is really exciting. It's I think we're the first spot in New York to have the moon juice beverages served in an actual cafe setting. Um, so those have been really popular. The Glow Matcha is amazing. It has collagen and beauty dust, matcha, coconut butter. It's just like a really amazing way to start your day. I usually have one in the morning. Um, and then we have our Power Smoothie or Superfood Smoothie Bar. Um, our power shots so you can get, you know, shots of organic pressed ginger, E3 Live, um, turmeric, and all of those good anti-inflammatory items. Um, and then we have, you know, we just, we do the basics too, but we do them the best that we can. So all organic teas and coffees and all of that. Um, and then we have a pretty extensive grab and go section, which has all organic food, grass fed beef. Um, or sorry, not beef, grass-fed, um, p- sorry, pasture-raised chicken and wild salmon. We're not doing beef oh, here cool. yet. Yeah, cool. yeah, just like really high quality 
type of stuff. And in your own health journey, what different sort of dietary fads and lifestyle fads have you been through to arrive at where you are now? Did you do the plant-based thing or, Mm -hmm. you know, have you tried paleo? Are you into bone broth? Like what have been the most nourishing and restorative food practices that you found? Yeah. So I really only have eliminated gluten as like my kind of main, main restriction to my diet. Um, Although when I eliminated gluten and that was like, wow, this food group has such an impact on how I feel. I wonder if other food food groups are having an impact on how I feel. Um, So when I started, you know, I had like hormonal acne. I was like, let's try dairy. So I eliminated dairy um, and have, you know, have kind of kept that limited. I don't have any cow dairy or else, you know, I just, I wake up with a few pimples and I know what the consequence is going to be. Wow. Um, can yeah. you get away with eating ghee? Yes. Or you can? I can get away with eating ghee and like raw goat and sheep cheese. Right. And so other than so other than that, you keep it pretty simple then. I do. I do. Um, I am a big fan of bone broth. So, you know, when I was with Parsley, I was also seeing them as a patient and kind of getting candida under control. Um, and so that was a really restrictive diet because it's very low in sugar. Um, I was incorporating a lot of bone broth. I still love bone broth first thing in the morning, which a lot of people can't do, but that's my thing. We actually just got bone broth here yesterday for, with Frodo. Oh, cool. oh, dope. Yeah. I'm going to so, have some of that on the way out. Boom. Yep. Yeah. Um, that has been really healing for me, both in my gut and my skin, which obviously we know your skin's a reflection of your gut. And what is it about bone broth that is good for your gut and skin? Why? Well, you know, it helps heal your gut lining along with a protocol of other supplements and removing other items from your diet, like sugars and processed foods and all of that. Um, And it has collagen. So if you're getting the really good high quality stuff, you're feeding yourself a lot of, you know, nice collagen. So you're putting basically in your gut what your gut lining is made of. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) That's how I've kind of thought of it. I don't know if that's exactly how it works, but it, I'm also just a big proponent of if something makes you feel good, it's, you know, in, in the health world, it's, it's yeah. good for you. You should, or, you know, if like an IV drip makes you feel good or infrared sauna or cryotherapy or one type of food makes you feel good, um, it's probably benefiting you. And if it, you know, if it makes you feel really shitty after, it's probably something you want to avoid. Just uh, listening to your body. That's, that's sage advice. And, um. I think that also at different times in our individual lives, we resonate with different things. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a period of cleansing and you do plant-based and then you're like, oh, wow, I'm starting to, I need energy. I'm a little flighty. And then you add the bone broth and then some fish or meat or whatever it is. But I like the approach um, myself of just, there's a different food program for every person, but then there's also different food programs for every person at different times. And depending on where you live and what you're doing. And that's, I think that's an important takeaway is really getting in tune with your body. So what what are the ways subjectively that you're able to tune in and get a yes or a no or a maybe on something that you might be shopping for, cooking or something like that? How do you determine if your body's giving you a green or red light? Mm-hmm. I feel like I've been listening to my body for like 10 years now. So it feels really intuitive. Um, but so I moved back to New York from LA in January and with New York, you have the seasons. And so not that you don't have any seasons in LA, they're still cold days, but you, it gives you the chance to listen to your body even more, um, depending on the weather. So like it's super cold here right now. And so my body has been saying like, you know, it wants a lot more warming foods, less salads, um, and just, you know, it, you go, you go through phases. It, it's like, you know, you, um, you, you just tune in and your body will kind of like guide you to whether it feels good or, or it doesn't. So, you know, if you eat a big salad in the cold weather and get bloating after, um, 
you start to like make those connections. Right. In terms of the business model and doing what you've done here, I mean, what was the first, I'm just, I want to go into like entrepreneur zone now because I find it fascinating when someone's able to execute something like this in New York City, especially, <laughs> which is like, I'm sure a huge undertaking. When you had the idea, what was, what was like the first step? You, do you have to find an investor and start raising capital or what does that look like? Or do you look for a space and then go, okay, I found a space. Now I need money. What, what's the, the, the journey look like of actually realizing a dream like this? That's a really good question. I think it's a lot of hard work and a lot of luck. So the way I was lucky is that, you know, I had this idea and then my partners kind of found me and they had this similar idea and all of us together put our, you know, we put our resources together to create this. So when we really started talking about the idea seriously last April, um, or not, not April, 2017, Got it. Um, it it came together really quickly, um, and two of my partners are are investors. So that was really enough for us to hit the ground running. And one of one of the investors owns um, the building we're in at Fifty Fourth Street. So he really had the idea and desire to make this a wellness space. He didn't know exactly what that meant at the time, and that involved a lot of conversations between us. But we there's also Equinox, Soul Cycle, and Skin Laundry, Skin Laundry and Blink in the building. So it's really this like wellness hub in the middle of Midtown East. Um, and you might think that a place like Clean Market would be downtown in all of the action, but that was actually really exciting to me that we could actually bring something new and refreshing to Midtown East. So that, that was really, really it. You know, we came together and we all knew each other through different connections. The stars kind of aligned for us. And 18 months later, here we are. And how did you um, start to lay out the space and figure out what you wanted to put where and all of that? An amazing architect. <laughs> oh, okay. That's how that works? <laughs> yeah, that's how that works. You so, get Because now you have all these levels and there's these little like, it's sort of cavernous, you know, when you come through mm -hmm. the main cafe and then you get down in the area where the IVs are and the saunas yeah. and all that. It's, it's a very interesting space the way it's laid out. So was this just a big empty box before you had an architect come in and start mapping it out? Yes, it was formerly a parking lot. No way. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love those shows where they like, you know, nuke a house and remodel it and all that kind of stuff. I love to see how spaces can be transformed and sort of brought back to oh, life. Oh, I'm happy to show you the before. <laughs> it was definitely that, a transformation. That's crazy. So we, it was completely intentional that each part of the space has a different look and vibe because... You know, NutriDrip is in here as our IV drip partner. Thermostat is our thermotherapies lounge with cryo and infrared. And it does feel more cavernous and spa-like back there. Um, and then I'm glad you think some other things are intentional. Like, you know, some, some things you just in inherit with the space, like the ramp and all of that. So Yeah, I think that was the thing that grabbed me when I came. I was like, oh, cool. There's a lot to explore here. Mm -hmm. And then how did you start to develop clean market as a brand because as I first found you and I, I saw your Instagram and all that, I was like, oh, cool. She has a great aesthetic and then started digging into the website. I mean, your whole design and aesthetic is super, super high end and very well executed. Who's the visionary behind that? Or did you hire someone? Mm -hmm. How did you kind of come up with the brand identity? Yeah, we... I, I had a vision for what the brand identity was. We really wanted to make this a modern, approachable, fun place. Um, and so I worked really closely with a design team to help make that vision come to life. Um, and that was one of the most fun, exciting parts of the entire process to me. You know, I'll check in on the construction, but really the design, the whole design, I was very entrenched in that process from every, you know, everything from the menus to signage, obviously the website and then our photos, which were, you know, I had had experience from my cookbook shooting and running photo shoots. So that part was super 
exciting and fun. Tell us a little about your cookbook. I sort of glossed over that part. How, yeah, how, I know. It seems the world away at the. <laughs> how right did now. you? And I'm going to jump back to what you're doing here because I'm I'm fascinated by the you know the again the business aspect of it and how that works. But how did you end up getting a deal and like being set to put a book out? Instagram. Long story short. Oh, really? Yeah. So my following had snowballed at that point and my editor was one of my fans on Instagram and she worked for Abrams and she reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in writing a book, Um, which of course. And so we went and chatted and, and she was like, this is serious. Like put your proposal together. Let's do this. Um, So I did, I backed up and got an agent and went through that whole thing. Um, But I ended up, you know, it, it ended up working out really well with Abrams. They were the right partner. And I left my full-time job to write the book. Damn. Wow. Yeah. I bet that was an exciting day. <laughs> Super exciting. Right? You know, like your parents are like, I don't know if you should. I was already planning to quit um, and leave and pursue the whole health and wellness and food thing. Um, and they were like, you know, I don't know if you should, but it's a little more convincing when you can show them the book deal. And what's been the most challenging thing about putting this thing together? You know, I'm I, I'm hoping that I'm speaking to someone out there that says, oh, I live in Cleveland or Detroit mm-hmm. or Seattle or wherever. And I have a vision like that too. I want to help the people in my community be healthier and make these lifestyle practices and, and foods and all of this stuff accessible. Um, what would have been the biggest challenges, roadblocks? Like, was it hard to deal with the health department and like the city legislation and permits, like what's been the the biggest hurdles that you've had to overcome? That's a great question. Because it sounds like you, in terms of like finding people that have money that want to do this, just, you know, there was synergy there and Mm -hmm. this uh, sort of um, a synchronicity happened that you you knew people, oh, hey, I happen to own a building in Manhattan. It's not like every day you meet someone that's got property (laughs) like that. So we're going to just put some fate, karma, luck, destiny in there too. But in terms of you being, you're a young woman, like as an entrepreneur, what were some of the things that you're like, oh, wow, I wasn't prepared for this. Challenges that you've had to overcome. Beyond the cost, you know, we do have investors, but it costs, it does cost a decent amount of money to get this off the ground. Luckily through NutriDrip, we, you know, the IV drip already had their medical license and all of the protocols. Uh, and I imagine that would be pretty difficult starting from scratch. Right. And then, I mean, this has been the most rewarding and the most challenging is finding people. You know, we have about 35 employees at this point. Um, yeah. So, and they're, they're all amazing. They all are so super passionate about health and wellness. Many of them are certified health coaches and, you know, they are the face of clean market. They are here day in and day out representing the brand, talking to customers, believing in what we do here and, you know, just making sure you have the right people to do that is that's what kept me up at night. Right. Right. So you're able, because you have the the partners, you know, the people that are doing the hot and cold kind of stuff and the people mm-hmm. doing the IVs that have gone through the process of making themselves legal and even building a name for themselves in the case of Nutridrip, Nutri, uh, Drip, for example. So you were able to sort of circumvent that issue and not have to deal with that yourself. And then you're just... I guess the disadvantage to that is you're sharing the money <laughs> you know, with people and not keeping it all for yourself and your partners. Um, so that well, makes- there might be, you know, we really kind of see ourselves as one big family. Right, so right. yeah, it's not. Yeah. So it's not like it doesn't feel like a sacrifice to you, but I can see that. Um, so that totally makes sense in terms of, you know, having partners that y- you drive with that are kind of handling the other two arms of the business. And then you have a staff that are knowledgeable. They understand functional medicine, mm-hmm. superfoods, herbalism, this kind of stuff. Uh, do you think there's more of a learning curve for your clientele because of the area of town you're in? It's, you know, kind of a financial district, whatever midtown um East that we're in is not like Soho where everyone's Mm -hmm. 23 and loves green juice already and knows what, you know, reishi mushroom is or something like that. So 
Do you get people that come in like poking their head in the door kind of going, uh, what? Yes. I would say it's a mix. It's people that come in and they're like, thank God you're here. Like I have been dying for a place like this in my neighborhood for the last 10 years. Right. And then there's other people who come in that are like, what the heck is this? But we have those intro items that are approachable. So smoothies that taste delicious, but they are still good for you and they have all the good stuff in it. Or, you know, our whole organic grab and go um, CBD products in retail. Everyone's excited about CBD these days. So we have those kind of intro items. Okay. So you have people come in that are going, oh my God, I've been waiting for something like this to come in the neighborhood. And then you have the newbies that come in. What's it like to introduce someone who's, I'm picturing just like a businessman who's in his forties or fifties and Mm -hmm. has never had a freaking needle in his arm like I have right now. How do you sort of explore some of these things with people that are new that have never been in a sauna or cryo? And Yeah. It's super exciting. I think that is what our staff is most excited about to introduce people that are not as familiar with these services and these products. And it's always so rewarding when that person walks in the next day and then they become a regular. So it's just really fun. And there's so many points of entry. So you can come in and just grab a smoothie or you can come in and do the works. So you can do the IV, the cryo, the infrared and grab a smoothie on your way out. That's cool. Yeah, I'm always for the works with everything. So as you being someone who ha- haven't lived in New York, what are some of the other things that you do here to stay sane and stay healthy in a city as your Insta- your original Instagram would indicate clean food, dirty city? That was it, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what are some of the other hacks that you managed to find where you can thrive and stay young and healthy here? Great question. It's one of those things that is a everyday challenge living in a city. Like I'm definitely not cut out to be a city person. And so to manage life in the city, which is truly where I want to be. And I want to bring clean market to a city because I believe that's exactly what a city needs as a storefront. You know, we might not need this out. Why do you need all this stuff out in the country? Um, But I swear by Vedic meditation. I was trained earlier this year. Um, so I try to meditate 20 minutes twice a day. That really has made such a big difference moving back to the city. Um, and Who did you get trained by? Jack at the road place. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, have, I don't know him. That's what I her. do. That's what I do too. Oh, her? her. Jack? Did yes, you say? Jackie, but she oh, goes Jackie. by Jack. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. yes. <laughs> Burn. Uh, yeah, that's. I've I've interviewed a couple of Vedic teachers on the show, and that's that's what I do too. That's that's one of my main keys to stay sane. In fact, I was just in the sauna, and it was like my time. You know, I usually yeah. meditate five or six or something. And I know that I can't really do it in a sauna, but I tried anyway. So I had like. I was so hot and I was pouring sweat. So it was like a very half-assed meditation today, but I had to kind of pick, you know, Mm -hmm. um, I'll probably get more benefit from the sauna and I can only do that here when um, I can do it somewhere else. But yeah, it's, it's, I think having that practice in a city is absolutely crucial. Mm -hmm. How do you think um, that shows up in your life as taking that time out every day, a couple of times a day to meditate? Well, my boyfriend says I'm nicer. That's so, a good, so that's, 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 that's meaningful. A big, that's a big, big thing, you know, because you don't come home with that irritability, that kind of like frayed feeling that the city might put on you during the day. Um, I find that I can be more thoughtful and present in meetings and conversations without my mind kind of like racing everywhere. You can kind of have that center with everything racing around you. And is it hard for you to sit there for 20 minutes and repeat your mantra and be still? Was there a point when you started to try to dip into that, that it was challenging? I think a lot of people that listen to this show and that are Mm -hmm. out there like the idea of meditating, but they're frustrated by trying to do it. And they think, you know, quotes, it's not working. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have that? Or is it something that just came naturally when you started to um, apply it? I had tried 
so many different types of meditation and they never stuck. Like I had tried guided meditations on apps, 10 minutes a day, five minutes a day, you know, two minutes a day. I was like, maybe if I can just do two minutes a day and I just couldn't get it to stick. And someone just said to me, like, you just have to find the type of meditation that's right for you. And they were like, and I don't think, based on what you're telling me, I don't think that's guided meditation. So they really encouraged me to try Vedic meditation. And I read a lot about Jack and her company. And I just felt like it was really the right fit. And, you know, of course, some days it's still hard. Some days you get up and you don't want to sit for 20 minutes. And I'm sitting there and my mind is racing and I'm thinking of all these things and I'm not in that Zen, you know, nice, warm, fuzzy state that you get in during meditation. But Jack always says like, it's still benefiting you. Even if you don't feel that, you know, meditative state sitting there, your, your brain is still getting the same benefit And so for me, that still encourages me to, you know, stick with that 20 minutes, even if it can be challenging some days. And really, the more you do it, the more you kind of fall right into it. Um, And for some reason, it just, it resonated with me. You know, even the 20 minutes is a lot easier for me to jump into than like a five-minute guided meditation. Thank you for the reminder of that, that the meditation is doing its job even when you don't have one of those super gooey transcendental experiences. I find that oftentimes the meditation I do in the morning is much busier. I'm much more like, I don't know, agitated is the right word, but just excited. You know, Mm -hmm. it's just like, I'm up, cortisol is gone. I took a cold Mm -hmm. shower. Like, let's do this shit. I have to force myself before I start getting into email and like really getting engaged with the world to go inward. And I always feel like that wasn't that good of a meditation. Not that I would like regret the morning one, but it, when I get the afternoon one, mm-hmm. that's the one where I'm like, I get into this super Plato land, just gooey, gooey land, which is the meditations, of course, that I like very transcendental. And sometimes I think those are the only ones that are working, Worth it. you know, right. or like, Oh, that was a good one. So thank you for the reminder of that, that Mm -hmm. every meditation is a good meditation. And since you kind of missed yours this afternoon, Jack always says, when you're on an airplane, which you probably know, you can meditate for as long as you want. I love that. My teacher told me that too, because I was trying to get advice about just how tweaked I get from air travel and stuff. And I asked him about meditation. He's like, oh yeah, that's the rad thing. When you're on a plane, it's sort of allowed. And I, of course being precocious like I am, was like, well, how did the ancient yogis know that planes were going to be invented? Who approved that? <laughs> you know, it's like, when, if Vedic meditation is 6,000 years old, well, how, you know, and those are, that's the reasons why, you know, you just go with the flow, Luke. Um, but yeah, I did. Actually, on the plane out here, I meditated for a couple hours and it was amazing, especially in a situation where one could have the tendency to feel bored or mm-hmm. stuck. Meditation is such a great tool for that. Is like you can turn the most boring, you know, automated sort of um, time span where there's really nothing to do, and you can actually make it productive by meditating. So I love doing those long ones on the plane, and people just think you're sleeping, so it doesn't matter. We'll be right back at you after this brief but important announcement. I'd like to remind you to get over to lukestory.com forward slash store. That's where you're going to find a collection of links to every single product that I recommend to keep yourself young and healthy. So whether it be a supplement to help you sleep, whether it's some biohacking technology, blue blocking glasses, blue blocking light, every single herb you could ever want to know about under the sun, it's all at lukestory.com forward slash store. I've gotten so many requests over the past couple years for my top picks. I just decided to put them all in one place. So at lukestory.com forward slash store, you will find links and in many cases, really sweet discount codes on every single product that I've ever tried and still believe in or even products that I'm still using to this day. So get over to lukestory.com forward slash store 
do your shopping there. You're going to save yourself a lot of hours of arduous research. I've done the work for you. I've vetted every single thing on the site. And I believe it is the best of the best, the cream of the crop. So get over there and check it out. It's a great way to save yourself some time and money and also a great way to support the podcast. That's lukestory.com forward slash store. And now back to the interview. In terms of the uh, the saunas and the cryo, how'd you get into that and why did you choose to integrate them? What's the value in those particular practices for you and offering them to clients mm-hmm. and stuff? Yeah, I mean, we chose everything to be synergistic with each other. So there's so many different benefits to both infrared and cryo. And obviously people have used hot and cold therapies together for thousands and thousands of years. So this is really just our take on it Um, or the modern take on it, the best hot and cold therapies we could possibly find. And then we have all had our personal experiences with infrared and cryo and seen the benefit that it's had on us personally. So for me, I mean, cryo, there's all of these, and we really try to map everything back to clinical studies. So our focus is on education, research, proven results, efficacy, and the research is constantly being, being done. A lot of these are new type of things. So the clinical research with cryotherapy, obviously for muscle recovery and all of that, and there's also new studies coming out now Um that talk about boosting norepinephrine in the brain, which can lead to reduction of anxiety and depression. Um, So if you're doing cryotherapy three times a week, you could possibly see benefits there. I definitely have seen benefits for myself, both in creating that state change from anxious, stressed out, to just reduct like immediate reduction in cortisol levels, increase in energy, you know, better skin. You have to, you know, it, maybe it's a little vain, but it's a result of decreased cortisol. It's a result of all of those great, you know, reduced inflammation in your body. And with cryo, after I started doing it a few times a week, I completely eliminated my monthly cyclical cramps. Really? Yes. Wow. Did you hear that, ladies? Those of you that suffer. I had a girlfriend for many years and she had the worst cramps. And the only thing that would, I wouldn't say cured them, but the only thing that helped was she would put my biomat over her abdomen and just run that infrared heat. And it would it would relieve the symptoms, but mm-hmm. never really, you know, full time. It's like it would always come back and you'd have to always right. apply that. That's interesting. I've never heard that. It, that was a totally unexpected benefit for me. You know, you get the... Cryo is also great for better sleep. So whenever I do cryo, I absolutely pass out at night and kind of sleep like a total rock and then wake up with a ton of energy. So yeah, I I really wasn't expecting that. And I had tried so many things and I try not to take Advil, but sometimes it slips in there, you know, when you get those really bad, painful cramps every month. Um, And then, you know, after I started doing cryo regularly, it they just never arose. And it, wow, that's yeah. cool. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to put that in my wheelhouse because that is a fairly frequent question. And my only answer is usually like, go see a functional medicine doctor, mm-hmm. get all your labs, make sure your hormones aren't tweaked. Which yeah. still should be done. We're totally right. a proponent of education and making sure you're doing what's right for your body. And a lot of people come in with scripts or notes from their functional medicine doctor. So we can do custom drips, custom protocols, you know, w- coordinating the IV, um, the IV with the sauna and the cryo. And then we also have a functional medicine doctor and a functional nurse practitioner that oversees this practice. Oh, cool. Cool. That's dope. So somebody could come in with labs and recommendations from their functional medicine doctor, someone like Parsley Health or or whatever, and be like, oh, I'm deficient in this or that. And you like put it in their arm like my <laughs> right now. Exactly. And it's like, cool, problem solved. Exactly. And we are we will also start to do some of the blood testing ourselves. So, oh, nice. Yeah, you can get your blood tests and results um, right here and kind of see where the deficiencies are. And we can create a custom IV protocol. And then you can retest to see, right. you know. 
that those levels were resolved. That's cool. Yeah, we have a place called Next Health in LA. Um, I think I'm about, to, yeah, the, the, I interviewed their one of their founders, uh, Dr. Shaw, and it'll be out before yours. But yeah, that's I don't typically do my testing there because I'm a member of Parsley Health, so it's just it's redundant. But it's pretty cool for people that don't want to go through... Mm-hmm even not just Western medicine, but they don't even want to go through the functional medicine route is like to just come in a health clinic like that, do the right. testing and then remedy based on whatever it is that the testing reveals. I think that's a pretty cool model. Um, it's going to put a lot of hospitals out of business. <laughs> so it's unfortunate <laughs> for them, but it's good for consumers because people are becoming much more discerning. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people that listen to my podcast, it's like, especially in my Facebook group, we have a Facebook group called the Lifestylist Podcast Facebook group. If you're listening, please request to join. But there's a few thousand people in there now. And I'm shocked at the amount of knowledge that people have. I figured when people started in in um, our group that they would be like a bunch of newbies. And they're providing very sophisticated questions and answers for one another in there. And they understand functional medicine and like how the whole thing works. But they don't always have the ability to find someone they like in their city. Mm-hmm. A, B, it could be really expensive if you have to do it piecemeal because, you know, you're paying for every single visit and then you're paying for the testing sometimes out of pocket um, if your insurance doesn't cover it. So I'm stoked about the model that you're describing where it's more self-directed and Mm -hmm. there are qualified medical staff on hand so that nothing's dodgy about any of it, right? But you can, I like the idea of being your own doctor. And having that autonomy and your own right. sense of, you know, um, authority over your test results, getting them done, what ones you want, what, what ones you don't want, and then remedying whatever it is mm-hmm. that those find. So that's dope. Um, let me see what else I want to ask you about. What are your um, future plans? Like if you could go big and give me your three, five, ten years, where do you see this going in terms of expansion or adding on, you know, other elements to your business model as your entrepreneur self, what are your creative ideas? That's such a hard question because I'm such a believer in what's meant to be will be. For example, a month ago, you know, I just got a puppy, which I mentioned oh, to you earlier. Oh, yeah. A month ago, I wouldn't have thought I got a puppy. I'm also moving part time to Jackson Hole. Really? No, yeah. So oh, none of cool. this, none of this would have even been able to be articulated a month ago. So for me to try to do three, five, ten years is so hard. But yeah. in terms of clean market, we have a few more stores in the works for New York city. So just bringing my main goal is to make wellness more accessible. And right now that's in the retail setting. So bringing more clean markets specifically to New York and then across the East coast and hopefully West coast, LA is my original home. So rooting for one in LA someday. Um, But really just making wellness more accessible. What's the deal with this um, Jackson Hole, Wyoming thing? How'd you pull that off? Yeah, so that will be very part-time because obviously I'll be um, in the store, but uh, my boyfriend's moving out there for a job opportunity. And that's kind of the perfect balance for me because I'm someone who really needs that grounding out of the city type of thing. Word. You know, wow, that's cool. Do you think you can handle the, well, I guess you're doing it. You're going to handle it, the long distance element of the relationship? That's why we have IV drips. Right. Oh, oh, I no, thought you the, meant for the jet no, lag. No, no. Yeah, not the travel. <laughs> God, that's, that is an issue in and of itself. But you can see what's top of mind. You're well situated to deal with that though. But yeah, just that's interesting having, I always marvel at couples when <laughs> they live really far apart like that because of a job or, you know, mm-hmm. military, whatever kind of opportunity. But you guys obviously have talked about it and you feel prepared to handle that and it's going to be... I mean, it's, yeah. It'll be, you know, there's challenges. There's always challenges, you know? And so um, I'm glad I have a puppy. (laughs) That'll help get me. Did you get an actual puppy or just a new dog or it's like a young dog? He, so he's a rescue from True North Rescue and... He's about seven months, but oh, he seems cool. he seems really. I think he's a little a little bit younger, maybe five months. Oh, he so seems he's got like the a little puppy. puppy energy. Yeah, oh, isn't it the yeah. best? I just got my dog Cookie, who's 
they claim when I um, adopted her, rescued her, whatever, um, that she was two. But she acts like so young. She has major puppy energy. Thank God she was house trained. Um, that is, it, is the one perk that makes me think he's a little bit older. He's house trained. Oh yeah, that's that's a that's really a benefit. But man, what a what an amazing thing! In fact, just today on Instagram, I posted a story because my friend who's house sitting and dog sitting back home, you know, I'm like, dude, I need my daily videos. I need my cookie fix. <laughs> I'm like so sprung on my stupid dog. <laughs> But he sends me pictures and I'm literally like the proud dad. Oh, she looks so cute in that shot. I'm going to post her. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm that guy. (laughs) But once it happens, you know, it it happens. So you got your dog to keep you company here. I mean, that that actually sounds pretty sick. I would love to have a place in like Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Mm -hmm. somewhere where you can get out and like be right be in nature for a week yeah Mm -hmm. that is becoming so crucial for me having lived in LA for a long long time pretty much every weekend I escape LA yeah if not Saturday and Sunday definitely Sundays I'm not hanging out in that city I gotta get out so good on you um so let me see what else um in terms of your supplementation and stuff like that from what i've seen in the store you seem pretty savvy now you've got like trained medical staff here and stuff how have you learned about (coughs) the quality of supplements and getting medical grade supplements Mm -hmm. and functional medicine supplements instead of just some swag off amazon i think to the less experienced and educated consumer they just think like oh a jar of b vitamins is a jar of b vitamins or d3 or whatever not myself having been a health nut mm-hmm. for so long, I know that there's a, a vast uh, array of um, supplements and things available out there that are basically like expensive pee. So right. what are some of the brands you like? What are some of the, you know, I see you have like liposomal stuff. Like you seem pretty on mm-hmm. top of it. How did you learn about supplements? What are the good brands? What can people look to avoid in terms of excipients, fillers, swag mm-hmm. stuff? Give me like your whole supplement yeah. spiel. So the supplement industry, as you know, is completely unregulated. So it was really important for me to bring in the best supplements and brands that I possibly could so that, um, so it was important for me to bring in the best supplements and brands that I possibly could so that the consumer could come in and feel confident that, you know, they knew what they were purchasing here was the best on the market. Um, my crash course in supplements, like I said, was at Parsley where we had so many different patient protocols for, you know, gut healing and just general well-being and energy and adrenal fatigue and brain fog and all of those types of protocols. Um, and then, you know, when we were merchandising the store, I used that experience and also combined with our functional medicine medical director at NutriDrip. Um, And I brought on a couple of other experts that I know in the industry to really help me curate the best of the best. So that's one of the most exciting things for me about Clean Market is that we're offering these medical grade supplements in a retail setting. Because typically you can only find them in the practitioner setting. So yeah, you have to like, you go get your labs done at your functional medicine doctor and then they sort of prescribe supplements mm-hmm. essentially rather than drugs ideally. But yeah, you can't get them on Amazon or go to Whole Foods vitamin section or get them. Like right. you can't get the good chronic stuff. Exactly. So we're carrying a bunch of brands um, that are really super high quality. They all have clinical testing. They all have, which means what they say is in the product is actually in the product, which right. is crazy that you, you'd you think if you're buying something in retail and it has a label on it, that's what's in it. But that's just not the case for supplements. Or, you know, if it's not harmful for you, for you, you might not be doing anything. So it might not be doing anything for you. So you're just really throwing <laughs> money down the drain. You're eating a lot of rice powder every day thinking it's you know, yeah. whatever supplement. What are, uh, what are the like top brands that you like for people listening if they wanted to... I mean, again, like they might not be able to find it um, in a health food store, but like, what are the, the the badasses to you? Some of my favorites that we carry are Zymogen. I swear by their Relax Max. That's the supplement that has made the biggest difference for me. And Be Active. I have the MTHFR gene mutation, so I'm you know I'm able to absorb the bees through that supplement. Um, Designs for Health. We have a 
number of their supplements that are excellent, Metagenics, Thorn, Pure Encapsulations, and those are kind of the top right. ones that Yeah, have. those are the badasses. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just hate for, to see people like waste their money when they buy supplements. Cause I know I've done that a lot. Um, those of us that are into the health stuff, we all have a cabinet in our kitchen somewhere. That's like the supplement graveyard. <laughs> those oh, yeah. are the ones you like, you hear about K2 or something and you just buy whatever brand. And then later you realize like, Oh shit, I got duped. I got the swag version of, um, of whatever it is. So I'm always kind of keen on finding, the brands that are doing it right and have less fillers and binders mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's like some supplement companies make these big horse pill capsules, but then if you actually, I think, sent them to a lab, the majority of it's going to be the things that make the capsules go together. The, the binder. Ma- yeah, the magnesium stearate and all these kind of things, which can be pretty suspect. So I like having um, uh, the fact that you have a place where people can shop and they don't have to go do the homework. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people aren't geeks like me or you. I'm just going to include you in geekdom with me. <laughs> like they don't want to be up all night reading every bit of copy on mm-hmm. some, you know, vitamin company's website and looking at all of their studies like you've done. They just want to know, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the best shit? All right, I'll, I'll take that. I mean, that's how all my friends exactly. are. I get texts every day from my friends. Hey, my doctor says I need this or that. What's the best one? You know, so much so that I made a freaking store that's just a bunch of links on my website because I got so many questions and I do like to do the research, but part of it is so that I can just turn people on to the the best of the best and not have them get ripped off or, as I said, buy a bunch of expensive pee. (laughs) Yeah, not fun. Um, Do you mess around at all with, uh, I mean, you're pretty young, so you might you might not have felt the need for this, but do you take any specific like brain supplements or nootropics or smart drugs? Do you try to get like super crazy performance going in your brain other than just your general like I'm not well-being as supplements? experimental with them as you are because I know you've, you've tried a bunch of different nootropics. I tried Qualia for a little bit. Um, And I've tested a bunch of different ones, but I found for me, I'm so sensitive that really just eliminating the toxins and the stuff that makes me feel bad is what gets my brain fog to go away and gets my energy up and my focus up. So I'm really focused on just kind of the essentials and I'm pretty, pretty minimalist. You know, I've been in the supplement world for several years now. So I've definitely gone through phases where I'm taking like 20 to 30 pills in a day and then phases where you have supplement fatigue and you try to cut down to just a couple of things. And or that's, like bank account fatigue. <laughs> bank, that's true too. <laughs> totally. Yeah, that's funny. So when you when you took Qualia, you found, um, thank you. I just got the one of the needles taken out of my arm. Yeah. I think I just got a giant shot of glutathione. Um, you did. So you might f- cool. start feeling a little bit high. <laughs> Yay, natural high. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I've gotten, it's interesting with Qualia, which is my number one go-to brain supplement. I mean, I just love that stuff. I take it, well, not every day, but five days a week, I take two days off. It's so interesting because I've had, I'd say like 50% of people like you say, whoa, too strong, too stimulating. Like, I don't need to be that smart <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or whatever you call that. And then I've had probably 50% that like, yeah, I took it and nothing happened. And interesting. I, I find that and- to, yeah, I find that to be interesting because the same stuff's in it, but our, 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 our biologies are so unique. You know, our chemical makeup, each one of us are so snowflaked that it's like, you really just don't know. Uh, but one thing that I... I found useful for those listening that maybe want to explore with some of that and are of the sensitive type is that uh, Qualia now has a version of it that doesn't have caffeine. I would love to and try so, that one because yeah, I think I, it's the caffeine that I don't need any extra caffeine. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, I haven't tried it yet either. I just know about it. Um, I'm still, or I'm still, I'm on like an auto ship. I'm still getting the one with caffeine, but I have noticed lately, and I think this is due to the fact that. Like you, I'm eliminating more of the stuff that gives me brain fog and I'm mm-hmm. sleeping better and I'm just taking much better care of myself than I ever have in my life. Um, so much though that my brain's actually functioning naturally just with the basics and a good diet. Mm-hmm. So now it's like if I do qualia 
and Bulletproof Coffee, which to me is, I have this whole elixir I make. It's not just Bulletproof Coffee, but it has Sheila Jade and all the mushrooms mm-hmm. and it's just total madness. Um, but I find now it's a bit overstimulating. Like I've done it on a couple of days where I have an interview and I'll take my six giant qualia pills and then pound this massive coffee. And I'm like, freaking off the rails. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> so I, I'm kind of, you know, it's interesting. And not only is each one of our systems unique, but like I was saying earlier with food, it's like our systems are just, they're tuned differently at different times and seasons and, and things like that. So I think I'm actually going to either take qualia on some days and not do caffeine mm-hmm. and do the caffeinated strong qualia or just get the, you know, the caffeine free qualia. And then I can enjoy my like bulletproof coffee with caffeine. But yeah, I was just, um, I was curious to to find that. But I, I think a lot of people that are younger and healthier and haven't mm-hmm. had, you know, brain injuries or like mm-hmm. or a lot of past drug use or had mold or Lyme or things that can really trash your physical brain right. um, do pretty well just on living a clean life. And, you know, you have the focus and cognition and the things mm-hmm. that you're looking for. You can access flow states and right. all the things you need to do by just like towing the line and doing what you're right. doing. Well, I'm glad that's in my toolkit for for future. Yeah, use. yeah. Keep it in mind. Yeah. And it, if you if you if you find that you're super high performance on the caffeine free quality, let me know because that's what I've started recommending to people that said, "Oh, it's too strong, it's too stimulating." People that are like, "Oh, quality doesn't do anything." I'm like, I, "Then your brain must What's be going on." Yeah, it's got to be a deeper underlying issue because you should be sensitive enough to notice, like, "Whoa, shit, right. those are strong," and you're taking quite a few right, of them as right. like the average adult does. So I'm like, hmm. That tells me there's some cognitive decline there or some brain fog or something that's coming from another unrelated issue. Well, it's also just so interesting because it goes back to bioindividuality and how everyone is so different. So while that might be the case too, people just react so incredibly different to everything, whether it's foods or supplements. And That's true. I, th- I think I'm like a freaking... Um, what, like, what are the... Um, like an elephant, you know, you have to hit him with this giant tranquilizer to knock him down. I'm, I must not be sensitive because I'll take 50 things a day. And then I do have friends and even um, my brother, Cody, I gave, I've given him like every nootropic and smart drug and he'll even just, he'll isolate the test, you know, and just not do caffeine, not do anything and just take this one herb and everything I'm ever given him. He's like, it's too strong. It's too strong. I don't even feel sober. Wow. Like I feel super tweaked and like, high almost, you know? And I'm like, what? I take the 10 things in a mega dose all at once. And I'm like, meh. Well, that's so. how some people feel after glutathione. So you probably don't feel anything. Whereas some people feel like they're kind of like floating. They're like, is this normal? And it is totally normal. It's kind of the detox process in your body starting to happen. Not that it's not happening if you don't yeah. feel that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just everyone is so different. What are some of the, and, and I want to, we'll wrap it up here. My IV is done and I, I I feel like we've like covered what I wanted to cover, but. Um, and you have to hop in the cryotherapy yeah. chamber. And you guys have the full body, which is awesome. So I can get my, my head frozen too. Right. Uh, what are some of the different things that you respond to well in terms of the IVs? I love the NutraCleanse, which is the cleanse that you got. Um, or the drip that you got rather. So it has B vitamins, it has magnesium, taurine, trace minerals, glutathione. And so that's our most popular, just kind of all around drip for helping deal with city stresses. So like free radicals, pollution, it's a great energy booster and helps your body natural, naturally detox. So the glutathione flushes your liver and kidneys which is obviously great. And then it helps with the glutathione, what's known as the glutathione glow. So, you know, glowing skin will just be added. That's interesting. I never even equated that with glutathione. I always think of it as, um, I'm just like, oh, it's a big antioxidant, but I never thought about the actual physical. um, The physical effects of what's going on when you have that antioxidant in your body. Right. That's interesting. Because I, as I'm celebrating my birthday, you know, when it's your birthday, of course, everyone says, how old are you? And I just turned 48 yesterday. So happy birthday. Yeah. Thank you. And now I find it's funny. I don't know, maybe because I'm close to 50 and people are like, oh, 48 shit, that's old. But now a lot of people say, God, dude, you look really young. You look good. Your skin looks great. And I go to Yeah. It's funny. I do a lot. I do a, a liposomal from Quicksilver Scientific. Mm-hmm. Um, 
quite often. And then I do the IVs quite a bit when I travel mm-hmm. too. So I'm like, God damn, I didn't even know it had that effect. Yes. And then the neutral immunity is I've been doing that about once a week, once every two weeks. <laughs> We're starting to enter flu season in New York. And I think that it's a debate almost every New Yorker has whether they should get the flu shot or not oh, get the flu shot. Oh my God. And so I talked, you know, there's some reasons why you absolutely should get the flu shot. Um, and then there's some people that are healthy adults that might not need the flu shot. And if you fall into that category, there's still things you can do to really boost your immunity and kill germs and viruses that are entering your body. And one of those ways to do so is through an <coughs> immunity IV drip. So it's, you know, high dose vitamin C that's a hundred percent bioavailable delivered oh, directly to your cool. bloodstream. Ooh, dope. I know that's the weird thing with vitamin C, like some vitamin C, the absorb, what's it called? Absorbic acid mm-hmm. uh, yeah. is from like GMO corn in China. It's like super swaggy and uh, like is actually bad for you. Not just not good for you. Right. Yeah, that's cool. But if you don't have access to an IV, even the live on labs, lipospheric vitamin C right. is amazing. And if you feel something coming on Kaylee, who um, is one of the founders there, she says just down six packets or half the box and right. you'll be good. Right. Yeah, I like those too. They're um, <clears throat> thing about those uh, live, they're called live on. Is live on live labs. On. Yeah, those live on labs. Yeah, those little packets and they have the glutathione. They have a lot of alcohol in them. That's the funny thing I noticed because I would do that too. I'd take like three or four and I, it's not like I got drunk or something, but mm-hmm. I thought, I think I just took maybe like a tablespoon of alcohol, like grain alcohol. I started turning my like sober buddies onto it. And I'm like, you might only want to take one, one of those time. vitamin C's at a time. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know the measurement on the alcohol, but that's the funny thing with some tinctures and things like that. You're, you, you can actually get a substantial amount of alcohol right. in your system. So it's something to kind of be aware of. Mm-hmm. Well, man, thank you so much for the impromptu interview. This yeah. worked out great. You know, it was interesting that we met and you had a story that I wanted to hear that I think the audience would like to hear too. And and it's also like a lifestyleist podcast record that I've never recorded a podcast while getting an IV. And I just think that's kind of cool. Amazing. People, well, thanks so much for coming by. Yeah. And people can listen and know that, you know, you can just hang out and live life while you get an IV. It's not a big deal. Super safe. You don't know how many meetings I've taken with an IV drip. Have you really? <laughs> yeah. Mostly on the phone, but some in person right. too. We're, we're both dripping. So yeah, I do it sometimes option. and I'm, I don't know if I've ever had my laptop, but definitely trying to do, you know, emails and stuff on my phone and doing everything with one hand can be <laughs> yes. a little bit problematic, but recording worked out quite well. Perfect. So uh, last question I always ask on the show is who have been three teachers or teachings that have influenced you, your life, your work, your success that you'd like to recommend that our listeners go check out? Great question. I I feel like I already mentioned Jack from Road Place, but she has made such an impact on my life through the teaching of Vedic meditation. So that's one you know, one person that I would, I would check out. They have a lot of online readings and she's based in Australia. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. She comes to New York and LA at least once a year to do sessions. Um, but a lot of it is available online. Um, then I would say, you know, there's this age of entrepreneurship happening with women that has been really inspiring to me. Um, we didn't really touch on this, but Bobby Brown, the, you know, the makeup artist has been one of my big inspirations. She's kind of like an OG entrepreneur and it's kind of, it's been really fun to learn from her, but she's also in the middle of launching her wellness company. Um, so to see her doing that again and using the same values and principles she used when she built Bobby Brown Cosmetics, many, many years ago has been amazing. It's kind of like that back to basics, grassroots approach that like, let's work really hard. And so to see that constantly inspires me. Um, and I mean, there's so many people, so many resources these days. I also really love Lacey Phillips, who I know you've 
Oh, talked yeah. To. She's amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. She was in Clean Market the other day, and we were talking all about my human design. She was like, you're this oh, and you're cool. this, I can tell. Cool. Um, but I really believe in manifestation and putting out there what what you want to get back. So I think her work has made such a profound impact in the world. Um, and I love, I love taking her workshops too. Yeah, I know. I need to take one of her workshops. I want to do coaching with her. When, when we recorded uh, her episode, I think the episode's called Free and Native, which is like her brand, uh, mm-hmm. something like that. If people want to look it up, we'll put it in the show notes. But uh, sitting down in conversation with her, I was so inspired by the end of it. I'm like, can we talk more? <laughs> like, I'm, this is a recording. I want to talk to you. She is really a powerhouse. And I'm excited. She has a podcast now, actually. I'm going to go on it yes. in, in January. And I, it reminds me, I want to listen to it. I think she has some episodes out already, right? Yes. Do you know? Yes. Yeah, I need to listen to that. I, I believe keep, so. I keep forgetting to download it. But she's just, yeah, she's amazing. So I agree with that. And people can go look her up. Uh, as well as the other recommendations. So speaking of looking up, where can we find you? Website, social media, your businesses, anything you want to talk about? Yes, yes. Clean Market. We are located in New York City. Our physical retail store is at 54th and 2nd. We're online at cleanmarket.com. And then on Instagram, clean.market. And my personal page is Clean Food Dirty City, and I share health. I still do share some healthy recipe, recipes and clean living tips on my blog, which is cleanfooddirtycity.com. That's a great name, by the way. Did you make that when you were living in New York? I'm assuming yes. New York is the dirty city. Yes. I was like, I can move back to LA because it's also dirty yeah, there too. Because that's the thing. And if, especially if you go to downtown LA, it's like maybe dirtier than New York City. It's pretty nasty. Yeah. So yeah, it's a great name. Well, cool. Well, I'm so glad that this kind of just came to fruition in uh, the organic way that it did. And I'm great that you were able to make time for me. And I was able to get over here before my... My uh, flight out tomorrow it just worked out great. So you yeah. are the crescendo of this tour of New York City uh, podcasting. And thank you for finding the time. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming. So that was an inspiring tale of uh, healing, redemption, and success in business. Like, what a beast. This young lady is just absolutely crushing it. Very impressive business. Very impressive young woman. And uh, I really enjoyed this conversation. And I really enjoyed my time at Clean Market. Like, honestly, I got to say, it's pretty cool to have a podcast that covers the topics I do because I get hooked up here and there. You know, I get the royal treatment. And and this recording session was, in fact, one of those cases where I really got taken care of. It's very nice, especially when traveling. So, hey, here's a shout out for me. If you live in a city and you have like saunas, cryotherapy, IVs, organic food, and you want me to come in and interview you, um, invite me over. And if you've got a good story, that might just happen. You know, sometimes I do this very spontaneously. And other times I get emails from people saying, hey, you should record this person or that person. And I say, well, I have a year long waiting list. Um, but I, and I rarely break that. But in this case, it was just spur of the moment and it ended up being a great episode. If you're visiting New York City and you want to check out Clean Market, listen, take Lily up on her offer, walk in there, say these words to whoever's at the front desk, Clean Lifestyle is 20, and they're going to give you 20% off your first service, which is pretty cool. Could be an IV drip, cryotherapy, sauna, et cetera. All right, so um, let's just thank our sponsors really quick. Of course, Organifi. I mean, come on, dude. These guys have been with me for a couple years now. I'm on their stuff on the daily. Actually, straight up, uh, right before I recorded, I made a little brain elixir because I was in (laughs) Kundalini Yoga teacher training for like 10 hours today, which actually turns your brain on. But I was just hella tired when I came home and I had to record uh, a month's worth of intros and promos and all this stuff. Um, you know, quality problem, I'm happy to do it, but my brain was like not there. It was sort of void inside the skull. So what did I do? I took some qualia uh, capsules and I, I uh, undid those and poured them into um, my Vitamix, the little spring water from LiveSpringWater.com, of course. And then I put some Organifi Gold in there so that my little brain elixir didn't taste disgusting. I also put about a heaping tablespoon of paracetam in there as well. But the point is, it's all about Organifi.com forward slash Luke. That was the only thing that saved this drink from being highly disgusting. Now, it was very effective, 
I took that drink, went and jumped on my Bellicon rebounder, stood in front of the Juve red light, got my groove on, but it was all about the Organifi gold. So go to Organifi.com forward slash Luke, use the code lifestylist and save 20%. And you can make yourself some badass elixirs too that actually taste good. Next up, we've got Vital Reaction. Here we go again. <laughs> like, no shit here. I actually just, okay, that was earlier. That was about two hours ago. I did my Organifi brain drink. And then I had to uh, use the facilities moments ago on a break. And I got up and was like, ah, I'm starting to fade a little bit here. I've been recording nonstop for a couple hours. You know, and these are the tedious recordings. Having a conversation with someone is one thing, but sitting here by yourself on the mic, honestly, it's... Uh, It's not as easy as it might sound. So I thought, what can I do? Ah, molecular hydrogen. So I took two vital reaction tabs, dropped them in some spring water, let them create that magical molecular hydrogen gas, took a deep breath, pounded that down, held my breath in. It's a little trick I learned from uh, past guest Tyler LeBaron. I did a show all about molecular hydrogen. Google it. I don't have the number in front of me. Episode number, I mean. Uh, Pounded that down, came back in, and just proceeded to nail four intros and outros in one take. Bada bing, bada boom, bada boom. Real nice. That's from Vital Reaction. Molecular hydrogen, the most potent antioxidant on the planet that you can put in your body. Totally natural, totally safe, freaking amazing. I've got the inhaler. I I rocked that earlier when I came home from class and meditated. I had about a 30-minute meditation, uh, huffing my Vital Reaction molecular hydrogen inhaler. Now that's a medical grade inhaler. It's pretty hardcore, not hardcore in that it's not safe, but it's, you know, it's got a little bit of price tag attached to it. If you don't want to go that far and be like a super nerd with a cannula in your nose, sitting there inhaling gas, which is, you know, not necessarily the best parlor trick you want to pull out on new friends or, or a date or something like that. Although I've done that um, sometimes with success. If you don't want to do the inhaler, you can get the Vital Reaction little tablets and just get on a monthly auto ship. That's what I do uh, at vital-reaction.com. You can use the code LUKEH2 and save 10% off those molecular hydrogen tablets and you just keep them with you. And anytime you're drinking some water, you just dip a couple of them in there. And someone in the Lifestylist Podcast Facebook group actually last night when I had uh, logged in was asking about um, the best travel and jet lag hacks, which... I'm sure you've heard me talk about it if you're a diehard listener, but I have hours worth of content recorded, like video content to make some kind of online course about travel or whatever. And I just can't get it done. Like, oh, by the way, if you're (laughs) if you're good at project management and you live in Los Angeles and you want to help me put this thing out, I'll give you some money. You have to be a an effing brainiac though. You gotta know how to use Kajabi, you have to know how to use Stripe project management software like Asana. You got to be good at Evernote, Trello. I need a super geek to help me get this content out. But one of the things I share in this never released content, because I just can't get it together. It's super frustrating. Because I just don't like techie, geeky stuff. I like to start projects, not so much finish them. So I started this amazing travel, travel hacking project and it's just sitting there in my Dropbox. Very sad. So help me out. Info at LukeStory.com if you want to apply to be my tech nerd helper and make some magic and some money, do that. But seriously, go to vital-reaction.com, use the code LukeH2 and save 10% off these tablets. And these are your number one air travel jet lag hack. If you're up in an airplane, you're experiencing major oxidative stress. You're being irradiated. You're in a low oxygen environment. You're totally inflamed. You're getting completely nuked by not only the sun, if you're flying during daylight, because you're 35, 38,000 feet closer to the sun. Think about it. Solar radiation. You're getting all the Wi-Fi radiation. People's cell phones in there that they don't put on airplane, trying to search for a signal. You might as well just go put yourself in a freaking microwave oven flying through the sky. But you know what helps? Molecular hydrogen. Vital-reaction.com has the answer, my friends. Okay, I think that's it. Whew, that was a handful. I'm so excited to bring you our Christmas special episode next Tuesday again. That's the high love experience. 
with your bud Luke here live at Rama, New York City. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. It's going to be a doozy and it's going to be the last episode of the year. See you then. Merry Christmas. This episode of the Lifestylist Podcast was produced by podcastmasters.net.